This is my new computer. There's really not that much interesting about it. It's got some Wi-Fi's and uh, well, I guess some of the really nice stuff is on the motherboard here. It's got a bunch of USB and it's got dual Ethernet NICs and it's got a GTX 970 and all that. But uh, you know, the neat thing I think has more to do with this case. And it's uh, pretty sturdy, easy to get to everything inside, and it's, well, I'd like to think it's kind of pretty. It's also pretty small. Um, don't really know, I guess I need a banana for scale or something. Uh, at any rate, it, uh, let's get the top off. It can be done just by unscrewing the nine uh, standoffs here, and then uh, we'll take a look inside. So, here is the inside. Uh, as you can see, the top just kind of comes off and can be pushed aside pretty easily. Um, you can uh, see that I have the, uh, uh, right there, still plugged into the motherboard, um, the motherboard header thing, which is just a IDC connector, the rectangular connector, hooked up to this sweet little uh, light right here. Some of the neater features is that it does have a Pico PSU right there. Um, and that may seem a little bit unusual, but the reason behind it is that uh, it actually all operates off of this right here. This is just a regular LED power supply. They're really cheap. I think this one was like 24 bucks, and it is uh, it's absolutely insane. It's, a, uh, it's rated 600 watts, which who knows what that actually is, but um, it's really cheap compared to the TFX supplies and other things that'll fit in this really small form factor here. Um, so I, I really think that this works out well. It's definitely working out well for me where I just have an LED power supply and you can wire that straight into the uh, the bus right here, the ATX power, or sorry, the PCIe power and even directly into the processor power. Um, all that can be wired to the 12 volts and it can remain on all the time and the computer barely uses any power at all until you power it on and then the Pico PSU cuts on and then everything else is fine. Um, I wanted a really small computer. I wanted something that would be portable so I could use it with the Vive. And uh, and I was able to find that. I found this really oddball ASRock uh, Micro ITX motherboard that had just about everything. It only had one PCIe lane, one PCIe X16 lane, but it does have a dual Ethernet and it's got a bunch of USB 3, including internal USB 3, which is uh, one of the things I was really looking for. Um, because I can have internal USB ports. And I have a couple more coming out on the side. Originally I was going to go poke the USB through the front panel, but that just didn't work out. So I gave up on it rather quickly and everything was fine. Um, again, just three mounted hard drives, mounted vertically. They seem perfectly happy like that. And um, I don't know, it's a pretty basic computer, GTX 970. One of the funny things though is that you may be like, why are you running this up on top like that? It's really weird. If you try running this down underneath, it won't work at all. And uh, with this PCI extension thing, unfortunately the highest speed I can really get is PCI 1, which is, well, I don't know, I think it's about half or less than half the speed of normal PCI Express X16, like PCI 3.0. So that's, uh, that's unfortunate, but uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd much rather have a compact case that doesn't quite work as fast as it would otherwise than have a like top-notch gaming computer that I can't really carry around easily. And uh, one of the things, just so you guys can see it, the way the color cord works is that those LEDs right there that are mounted along the top, those are wired right here into this little AVR. Um, the little AVR is plugged in by USB into the internal USB 3 port. Um, so all this stuff works together to make a, a reasonably good gaming rig. I can play all the VR games that I like on it without any lag or issues or anything else. I think it makes sense to take a look at the back and how it's mounted. Um, it's really just a bunch of standoffs, even standoffs on the hard drives. They're a little more difficult to see. Um, that are just mounted through holes in this back acrylic here. Um, regular old screws just hold them in. 
and these big beefy standoffs, they're held in by washers with screws on the back. It's a uh, number 10 screws, so they're, they're quite substantial. Um, and the neat thing is, they, uh, they kind of all work together and keep it very rigid. So I was worried initially about structural stability and maybe damaging the, like, the stuff inside, but this is sturdier than most aluminum cases I've used. Um, okay, now I guess I'll get into like, how it was, uh, how, we, you know, put it, how I put it together. Oh, round two. See, that's what I'm talking about. It's annoying to peel. I would have left the other side unpeeled, Charles. Why? Just until you're done assembling it, because you're going to scratch it up. No. Because that's the outside he's peeling right now. I know.
let's watch this almost disaster. And, uh, uh, uh. Well, if you guys like this video, uh, let me know. It was really easy to edit and put together. And don't forget to watch the uh, color cord video that uh, was, I guess, teasing this one. Thanks.